morning, morning. Raising progress. Okay. Good morning, church. Um, beautiful Sunday, Sunday today after a week of rain. So thank God for that. So let's stand and let's start with a prayer before we open up with worship. So Lord Jesus, we thank you for the sun, that you bring sunshine, but you also bring rain. You bring all the different types of weather for us. So Lord, we thank you for all that, for your creation. And we pray that you bless everyone who's here and who's on the way or people that are unable to make it. So yeah, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's worship.
looks looks like the ongoing work together. Bring the whole five into the storehouse that the air may be in my house. That he is there that Lord Almighty, see if I will not throw open the foundation of heaven, for out of so much blessing, there will not be room enough. Five, three, ten. Amen. Welcome, church, to this Sunday morning service. We're glad to have you all here in person and online. And we want to welcome each other. We want to welcome and say hi to you on Zoom, and we want to share God's peace. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. And we need Jesus' peace, peace that the world cannot give, peace that the world doesn't have right now. But we need his peace. So let's share God's peace and blessing with each other, both online and in person. Okay, a few announcements. Next slide, please. We are having a youth barbecue with families on June 10th at South Arm Park. So youth families, the current youth, if you're a high schooler, and your families, we want to invite you, as well as any grade sevens who are coming into youth, graduating from elementary to high school, we want to welcome you. We want to have a fun time, share some food, have some fun, get to know each other a little bit better and connect. And this will be one of our sort of outdoor, we're going to begin a series of outdoor things through July and hopefully August as well of just youth gatherings outside. Um, June will have a mix of indoor and outdoor. So that's June the 10th. On the 12th, which is next Sunday, we're going to have an REC family challenge. So the young adults group, um, the Friday group, I guess, primarily, is helping us plan some activities, games, things like that. Family challenge next Sunday at 2 p.m. No, not next Sunday. In two Sundays, sorry. Next Sunday is the fifth. In two Sundays, it'll be the REC family challenge on the 12th. So, um, we invite you guys to come out for both of those. It should be a fun time. Um, and lastly, before I forget, for youth and young adults, we are hoping to have a youth-young adult crossover hot pot 
on the whatever the last Friday is. So the 24th of June. And hopefully we, our goal right now is just try to make some more connections and also try to bridge any of our grade 12 students over into young adult groups. Let's continue to pray for Nasser and his family. Pray for them. Apparently it's very hot in Thailand as it always is. <laughs> that was the update from Genesis on Friday, youth group. We wanna pray for them. But we also wanna pray and in the awareness of what has happened in this past week in response. And it's sad that we have to process and think through these things in the face of tragedy. We still have the Ukraine war, but we also had this shooting in Uvalde. We actually had a shooting prior to that in Buffalo. Um, and um, part of the call of scripture is for us to sing through the Psalms. And so sometimes when things are tough, when they're difficult, when they're sad, the Psalms give voice to that. It's called lament. And sometimes in lament, we also call out, um, oh, sorry, sometimes when we're in joy, we still call out in lament because it's in echoing the voices that are lamenting. And sometimes when we're lamenting, we also call in joy because there are, a, there's a global church and there's a variety of experiences. But even though we are not directly affected by the pain and suffering in the world, we want to cry out. Even in spite of a beautiful day, we have some flowers here. Actually, that's another announcement that we're going to do some planting afterwards in the planter box outside if you want to join us. Even though it's very nice and peaceful for us, we want to cry out and lament, calling out to God as part of the global church. And so would you bow your heads now as we just take a moment to call out to the Lord. And so, Lord, we just cry out to you and say, Lord, this is so painful to continue to see more lives lost of children whose lives were taken from them and from their families of teachers who were taken from their school and their families. And Lord, we just say that we can't comprehend the sorrow that they are experiencing. And yet, Lord, you know. Oh, Lord. And we confess that these kinds of things seem like they are too big of a problem for us to solve. They're too much of a hurdle to overcome. And yet, Jesus, you have overcome all of our sin on the cross. You have already done it. And so, Jesus, we can only look to you in hope and look to you for hope as we grieve alongside of those who are truly grieving, whether it's in Texas or Ukraine or elsewhere around the world. Lord. And we just say, Lord, would you hear our cry? Lord, would you hear our cry for peace? Would you hear our cry calling for your kingdom to come and your will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven? But we know these things are not right and these things are not good. And yet, Lord, we also look forward to the day that you will come and you will make all things new. You will restore all things to goodness. You will make us new, this whole world new because of your goodness and your power and your authority. So we look to you, Lord, and we focus our eyes on you. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Let's say together now the Apostles' Creed, which reminds us of our faith and the greater story of the Bible. Let's stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He seated at the right. He seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're going to ask Madeline and Chloe to come now. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus according of Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may, be, may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. And I in them and you in me, that they may be, become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also who have you, you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me before the foundation of the word of oh, 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 righteous father so the world does not This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. We thank you, Father, that we can be one with you. That means even in the midst of the shootings, in the midst of climate change, in the midst of all tragedies, you are actually in us and we are in you. So we pray, Jesus, only for that peace that passes understanding that you can pass to us. So today, as we seek you as your children, we ask you to renew us with your hope. We pray this all together in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. We are coming to the close of our series on creation in the past five weeks. Today, as we close, you might be a bit surprised. Why are we looking at this very gloomy picture of dry and cracked land? You know, some of us may go through seasons that feel dry and like there's nothing. And you know what? The Bible actually talks about that, that creation is groaning. You know, when I was growing up and I knew about Jesus, nobody really talked to me about this. Okay. This is in Romans chapter eight. Uh, this is, I just thought, oh, you believe in Jesus, you go to church, then you go to heaven and everything is good. But little did I know that the Bible actually talks about creation, not only being beautiful, but the Bible describes creation groaning in pain. Did you know that? Let's just go to the next slide as an overview of what we have looked at in the past few weeks. You'll recall in the first week, well, Good Seed Sunday, we kicked it off. And then we talked about creation in Genesis. Remember, we made those little models of the streams of water, the flowers we made of how beautiful God's creation is and how he makes us 
his creative image bearers. We talked about creation in the Old Testament Torah. Moses told us that there should be rest in the land. How many of you need rest? I need rest, right? The God says you can't just keep working forever, right? You know, we have to take rest and Sabbath. That was about our creation, our Sabbath in creation. And we talked in the Psalms about this picture. Remember, Pastor Josh led us to meditate on all those pictures of the oceans, the clouds, and so on. And last week, we talked about the Gospels picture of creation. We had this beautiful mural of I am the vine. And remember, many of us, we wrote down, we believe God is creating fruit in us, and we put it on the vine. And actually today, after service, we're going to be putting it up on the wall. So if you want to help put that up uh, or, or just take a look at it, uh, uh, Eric will help put that up. And it's just going to be a beautiful picture of how God is growing us in his garden. So today, as you notice, we kind of move through all of the Bible, right? Uh, the very first book of the Bible, uh, the Torah, and then the Psalms, and even the New Testament Gospels. Today, we're going to close off by looking at the epistles. What's an epistle? Anyone tell me? What's an epistle? Anyone? It's a... <laughs> Daddy's helping somebody. What, what's an epistle, Chloe? What is that? A letter, right? A letter, like when you write a letter to somebody. And so Paul in the New Testament wrote many letters. One of these letters was written to the Roman church. And in this letter, uh, there is a section that talks about how God sees the pain of all of creation, but he's also going to renew it. And so that's why today we're looking at creation groaning. Next slide. Creation groans. I, I, I like this image. Well, I don't like it, but I find it interesting, right? Because you have the, the beautiful creation on one side. But on the other side, you have a dried and withered up creation, the dryness uh, of, of nothingness. So that's what we'll be looking at today. That creation as beautiful as it is, sin comes into the world, dries it up. And we actually hurt the world. And so you can open your Bibles to chapter 8 in Romans. You can also follow in the screen. So could we go to the next slide? Yeah. In creation's groaning in Romans 8. Can we read this together and, and see if you notice some words that are repeated here as you read it? Let's read it. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. What is the word that is repeated here? Anyone notice what's repeated? Just shout it out. Creation, right? It's about God's creation. I know there's a lot of big words here, but it's saying that when God created the whole world, it actually is waiting in expectation for the children of God to be revealed. That means uh, when Jesus comes back to welcome all his children home, creation itself is waiting to be resurrected just like the people of God. It says in verse 20, the creation was subjected to frustration. Do you think our creation, the world right now, is frustrated by everything going on? Yeah, I see some nods. Yes, right? You think about uh, the carbon emissions, uh, all the pollution. You think about people mistreating the earth. There is frustration in creation. And it says that it's not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. So who subjected creation to this frustration? Well, only God has the power to do that. But do you remember in Genesis, when God created the world, who did he give power and authority to rule over the world? human beings, right? Adam and Eve, right? And because we've seen throughout the story of scripture that human beings have failed at our job of taking care of God's garden. And so actually we have subjected creation to frustration. The decisions that we make as human beings, whether it's little things like littering, that means throwing garbage on the floor, to not recycling, to bigger policy decisions, all of that subjects creation to frustration. And it, 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 the scripture points forward 
to when creation itself will be liberated from its bondage. That's almost language like when we're liberated from slavery, when we're liberated, freed from sin. That's what liberated means, right? Children, it means to be freed from something. And we can be brought into the freedom and the glory of the children of God. You know, children have so much freedom, right? I love it. Earlier we were worshiping and some of the, of the children, you're running around with the flags, just singing, right? The uh, build your kingdom here. I love it. And that's the kind of freedom that God wants to restore to the world. So it would no longer be gro groaning. Next, next slide. I want to talk about this verse. In verse 22, Paul says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning. Have you ever groan? You're like, oh, so frustrated. But, but it's not just a normal groan. A groaning like what? As in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Have you ever heard the groaning of someone about to give birth? All the moms, all the husbands, have you heard your wife groaning? I heard it. It's horrible, the groaning. But God is saying that the earth is groaning, just like, ah, oh, waiting to give birth to new life. For you see, the Bible is not about the earth will implode on itself and be destroyed, but that one day there will be a new birth of a new heavens and new earth. But before that, there is groaning. So I thought we would just do a little exercise to think about this on the next slide. And I thought we could ask ourselves, what are the things that are making creation groan? That makes creation just like, oh, the world is, is not going well. I have just two simple examples for you first, and then you can get you started. The first one is, you know, we can think of all the wildfires that are happening, right? Every summer, my friends in California, I was praying with them and they said, oh man, it hasn't rained since January to like April. I was like, that's crazy. Groaning with the dryness, the fire that destroys lives. Or the opposite spectrum on the next image is a lot of Pacific islands are flooding now. She's not on a vacation, by the way. Uh, this person lives in the Pacific islands and because of rising sea levels, it's flooding and their homes are getting flooded and people have to start moving. So now I want to ask you, it's going to be a little exercise. I'm going to bring a whiteboard up later, but I just want you for a minute, just turn around to your neighbors. And if you don't know your neighbors, just introduce yourself and just ask them, just think about it. What is making creation groan right now? You can come up with a list. Okay. I'll just give you a, a, a minute. You can turn to people around you, your children, your family. What is making creation groan? All right, give you a minute. Oh, Matthew had a very good example. Can you share it, Matthew? Sorry, can you say it again? I couldn't really hear it. Something about the trees. Ah, okay. God is pruning the, the bad sin. Ah, okay. So Matthew's remembering last week, we talked about cutting off the bad fruit, bad trees in our lives. So like our human sin makes the creation grown as well. Okay. That's great. What else? What else do we have? Children, anything else? Maddie or Allie? Pollution, right? Just pollution makes the world sad. What else? Maddie? Yeah? Global warming?
Maddie said, throwing away stuff that you could have used, but you just throw it away. So you waste things, uh, just a culture of throwing things away. Okay, somebody's, Zoe? Okay, flooding. Yeah, also related to global warming because of there's flooding. What about, what about the adults or youth or young adults? What do you, anything? What did you guys talk about? We use too much gas, Abel says. Gas, yeah, that's a big factor. Not only driving, right, but just gas for all the different industries, yeah. Anything else? Human greed. Wow, so that's not even just a, something we do. It's an attitude that we have. Okay. And then I heard uh, Rachel said, glaciers melting. Glaciers. Let me try to draw glaciers. I don't know. Glaciers, right? Yeah. So related to the global warming, glaciers melt. Definitely makes creation groan. Anything else? Yeah, Sophie? Chopping down too many trees. Yeah, deforestation. Deforestation. That's right. You're cutting down too many trees because we want to build things. Human greed. It links again. Maddie? Earthquakes. Yeah, even natural disasters. Earthquakes. This is the earth. Groaning. Okay, I think we got a good list so far. Any last things we want to add? All right. And I think uh, related to pollution, someone said earlier, like it's the CO2, right? The carbon emissions. So a lot of things is making creation groan. It's in pain. Maybe you also feel in pain. Do you know that this scripture in Romans 8 actually talks about both the earth's groaning but people are also groaning. It's a scripture that God says, whenever the earth is hurting, people are hurting too. This is a, a really big story throughout all the Bible that looks at pain in our lives. And maybe you think of this week, right? We, we not only have the, the global warming and climate change groaning, we also have the, this picture you may have seen in social media, right? Of all of the, the children and the uh, the teachers, the 21 of them, at least a few days ago, it was 21. I don't know if it's updated at all. But these children and teachers who were, were shot uh, in, in the States or in Texas, in Uvalde, we groan because uh, somehow somebody can get in with a, a automatic rifle and kill all of these students. We groan because it seems like nothing has changed after all these years. We groan. I've groaned a lot this week. And you know what? The good news of scripture is that God doesn't just say, hey, be happy. Don't worry about it. We, we had that song last week, right? God actually says, no, creation itself groans when you're in pain. When you look at the faces of these children, God is groaning. We and the earth are groaning. And where do we find hope when we look at this? Sometimes we just can't. And so I direct my eyes of scripture to what does God teach us about how he's going to hear our groans? Let's continue on in the scripture. Romans 8. Let's read this together to, to offer us some hope as we groan. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies, for in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. So we here are waiting not only for the groaning of creation, but God is saying those of us who know God, whose spirit has filled us, that we've experienced the Holy Spirit, it doesn't make everything perfect because we too, as his children, we groan inwardly. Maybe you, have you ever thought why I believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit has helped me. Why do I still have pain and suffering in my life? The apostle Paul himself, I groan with pain because we wait for what? We wait for a redemption or it means a rescue of our bodies and our spirits. Paul has a hope for one day when all of creation, all of human beings, everyone who has died will be renewed by the spirit of God. I would just want you to think for a moment. Remember when Jesus died, nobody knew he was going to come back to life. 
all of his disciples were depressed. They locked themselves in a room and Jesus appeared to them in the room, gave them hope. I'm, I'm back. I'm back, guys. Or remember when Mary runs to the tomb, to the place of death. Remember that story, children? She's running and she's crying because she can't find the body of Jesus. She meets somebody. She doesn't know who it is. She looks and he says, Mary. At first, she thought it was the gardener. But then she found out it was Jesus, the true gardener who is renewing the garden of Eden, who is renewing the garden on earth. That's who Jesus is. But you see, brothers and sisters, this hope we have, it's not something you can see right away, right? Because what is hope if you can just see it right away? Hope means you, you look to something you cannot yet see, but you know it's coming. That's the faith that the disciples had to have in Jesus. You know, children always ask, how come I can't see God in his body? I get asked that all the time. And I said, that's what hope is. Even though there is suffering right now, we see hope and believe what God is going to do. That means in spite of all of this groaning on the earth, we have hope that there will be a new creation, that this is not the end. And you know what? The Spirit, the Spirit of God helps us because we are weak. Paul goes on in verse 26. He says this, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. How many of us feel weak? I do. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts moves the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. The Holy Spirit helps us. How? He prays for us with what? Beautiful music and words. No, here it says wordless groans. And earlier it said creation is groaning. The children of God are groaning. But even the spirit of God is groaning. God is in us as we groan. It says in our weakness, the spirit is interceding for us. You know, I never understood that. Uh, I was like, what does that mean that the spirit is interceding for us? You know what makes this Christian faith so unique? You can go to the next image. What makes this faith so unique is that we are not just a people who pray to God, but God himself, the spirit of God, prays for us. What other faith religion would teach that? That God himself would first come down to earth to die for his people and then be raised back to life to be seated at the right hand of God and that he himself is praying for us praying for you when you can't fall asleep at night, praying for you when you're worried about your job and the next paycheck. The Holy Spirit is interceding for us. Did you know the Holy Spirit is interceding for you? Did you know the Holy Spirit is interceding for the world? You could say that to the person next to you. Do you know the Spirit is praying for you? Do you know the Spirit is praying for you? Don't worry, hey? The Spirit is praying for you. When we are weak, the Holy Spirit is praying for us to receive strength and renewal. And this brings us full circle back to the first week of Good Seed Sunday. I want to bring you back to this image. For Good Seed Sunday, we talked about how God uh, is restoring relationship or reconciling our relationship with God, with people, and with the land. He said in Colossians chapter 1, 20, that God is reconciling all things, whether in heaven or on earth, by the blood of Jesus. He's making peace by his blood. Today, God is saying that even though there's groaning about pollution, global warming, throwing out garbage, deforestation, glaciers melting, do you know what? God is in the work of restoring and reconciling broken relationships. When you look to the end of Scripture, in the last book of the Bible, Revelation, Jesus says this about creation. 
He says in Revelation chapter 21, 5, I am making, say it together, all things new. Jesus says, I am making all things new. Do you know that Jesus is making all things new? He's making you new. Even if you deal with a lot of garbage, a lot of stress, he's making you new. You can say that to the person next to you. Do you know Jesus is making you new? Do you know Jesus is making you new? Do you believe that? I mean, that's the hope we hang on to, right? That actually our lives aren't stuck forever right here. That there is renewal, that there is restoration coming. There is a new thing that is coming. And I just want to say something about newness to, to finish this. Because when we talk about new things, we're very often tempted to think of new things as like, hey, the, the latest phone, that's a new thing. And then you throw it away. Somebody said that, right? You throw it away, the garbage, and then you buy another new thing. And you just get rid of stuff and make more junk and get new things. But the Bible has two different words for new. There is that kind of new. But there is a different type of new, a kainos, which means that God renews what was once broken. It doesn't mean he just throws it out. When you get injured, you don't just get thrown out, but you actually are made new. I want to leave you with this image. This image is of a, a it's pottery, right? But you notice what's special about the pottery? It's not just a pot. You notice what's, what's there? Anyone guess? It's, it's, it was broken. You're right, Matt. It was broken. You can see the cracks, right? And so the cracks have been filled in. Move this board a bit so you can see. The cracks have been filled in with gold. This is an ancient Japanese technique called kintsugi. Kintsugi, which means gold mending. I learned this from a Japanese artist, Makoto Fujimura. And he talks about how when the pots have been broken, they don't just throw it away. It's because they have been molded by hands. It's been crafted. We don't just throw away something that has been created. Just because you made a mistake doesn't mean you're no good. Actually, when something is broken, God will mend it. And kintsugi is an incredible picture for us, not to just throw away things that are broken, but it's become something new, right? It's not the same thing, but something new, but it's a renewed thing, right? It's a renewed uh, uh, a bowl. It's even more beautiful than before. Sometimes we can get broken down. We can experience a breakup. We can get uh, our, lose our jobs, but God can renew us to make us into a more beautiful piece of art. The Bible says you are God's uh, handiwork. You're God's piece of art in Ephesians. Hinsugi means that there's hope for creation. Although we see there's too much gas usage in the world, there's too much human greed, there's too much deforestation and flooding. God isn't just going to abandon the earth. God gives us hope that there will be renewal in the earth, that the Spirit of God is praying for you and for me and for all of creation. Even in our sickness, God will bring us to a healing to make us a new thing. God is in the process of making the broken healed and new again. And so the final question I want to leave you with as we ask God is, how is Jesus making you new? What is going on in your life right now that feels broken? Maybe for some of us, it's really, we look at creation. There's too much pollution. There, there's no hope. And, and we feel so broken about creation's pollution and groaning. Maybe some of us, we go through different stress. Could be in your work, your studies, your family. There's broken relationships you cannot heal. How is Jesus making you new? For he is the one who says, I am making all things new. Let's have a moment to pray. And let's ask the Lord now. And I'll invite the worship team to come up to as we pray and ask him. So Holy Spirit, we invite you to come. We invite you to come, Holy Spirit, to show us deep in our hearts the wrong and broken things in our lives. Show us, O oh God, 
And we want to surrender to you all of the broken and cracked pots in our lives. God, fill us with that gold to mend our broken pieces, to make us into a new creation. So God, heal us. Heal our wounded spirits. Heal the broken creation, God. That is our prayer. Heal us, oh God. We need you, Lord. We need your hope. So this moment, I just invite you to just open your hands to receive God's hope. Receive God's spirit. You say, I need you, Jesus. You can just pray, Jesus, make me new. Jesus, make me new. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yes, Jesus Christ, you are the living hope. He's the hope that brings death to life. After the service, we have a chance to respond. The flowers outside have all died. But as a sign of caring for creation and God's renewal, we'll be planting some flowers after the service. So all the children, if you'd like, you can take turns. We have shovels to plant it in the planter box. It's for adults, everyone else too. You can just be outside and enjoy as we plant. This is a sign of God's hope. So let's pray. Receive this blessing. May the God who renews creation renew your life. May the Father who loves you fill you with his love. May Jesus fill you with his resurrection power. And may the Spirit of God who is interceding for you give you strength and renewal. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. All right, bless you, church, to receive his living hope. Do it.